Welcome back, Seth Bling here. And today I want to show you a data pack that I made for Minecraft 1.13. It's called Bling Edit. Uh, it's a world editor inspired by MC Edit and World Edit, uh, but this is a data pack. So no mods or anything required. You just download the zip file and you're good to go. So I'm going to show you some, uh, I'm going to show you all the features, but first I want to show you kind of an example of what sort of stuff you can do with my data pack. So there I filled in an area with a bunch of sand. Here, I'm just going to kind of round it out. Um, there's different kinds of uh, cursors you can use. And so you can either have it uh, select the block you're pointed at or have it have a cursor and float in front of you. Uh, here I've selected a bunch of sand blocks. I'm going to clone them with a clone brush. Um, I'm also going to change my cursor range so it's a little bit farther away. And I'm actually just going to drop a bunch of sand here. This is going to create a nice little pile of sand. And um, I'm basically just trying to create some naturalish looking landscape or a little hill. And so uh, this is the, the clone brush functionality. And yeah, okay, once I think that's good to go, uh, let me go ahead and uh, select all this. I'll use the different kinds of brushes as well. Let's put it back at range five. Now I can replace these blocks. Uh, so I set block um, sand to select the block that I want to replace and then grass block to replace it with the grass blocks. Now I've got a little hill. Uh, I'm starting to sound like Bob Ross here. Got a happy little hill. Uh, let's put some trees on there. Happy, happy little trees. Um, so I'm going to select this tree. Now, if you didn't get the selection quite right at first, you can uh, like grab and move these little anchor points, and just make sure the selection is is exactly where you want it to be. Uh, that's very much inspired. Oops, very much inspired by MC edits. All right, I think this looks good, so I'm going to use, again, I'm going to use this clone brush. And I'm going to use a different cursor type so it'll always be on the ground. So if I just click a couple times, we'll get a couple trees on the ground. And so we can put these trees up on this hill. And so now we've got a few trees there. Um, <clears throat> uh, the uh, Bling Edit supports plugins, and so if I select all this, I can use the Vegetate plugin that I wrote. And that'll add some random vegetation on top of this hill, a bunch of flowers and stuff. Um, it supports randomization of blocks. So if I, say, put a few dirt here, two stone, and a coal, now I can select this as my random block pool by clicking random and then uh, store select region as random block pool. And then it'll basically, I can randomize between these six blocks. So half the blocks will be dirt, a third of them will be stone, and one will be coal, or one sixth will be coal. And then I can select all this dirt that I made and uh, go to random, replace in selected region from random block pool. So I can say I want to replace all the dirt with blo random blocks from that random block pool. And some of them will stay as dirt. Some of them were already were still grass blocks, so they hadn't been converted yet. But, uh, but you can see it replaced a lot of the dirt with stone, and there's some coal in there too. So that's just kind of like a little overview of the type of stuff you can do with Bling Edit. But I'm going to go over all of the individual features right now. To install Bling Edit, first you'll need to download the data pack. It's a zip file. There's a link in the description to the manual and the manual includes the download link. You download the zip file and put it in the data packs folder of your save file. And then you either reopen the world, close and reopen the world, or you type slash reload. And you should see something like loaded bling edit. And uh, then you know you're good to go. Then in order to actually use the data pack, you'll have to give yourself a diamond sword and an anvil, and then rename the diamond sword to bling edit, capital B, capital E, no space. It has to be exactly like this. And if you do that, and you select the sword, you should see some kind of cursor in front of you. It'll be this red box. Uh, the world can't be in peaceful mode. This is actually a magma cube. If I go into uh, spectator mode, you can see it's an invisible magma cube. I also have a big slime in front of me. That's the click detector. And so if I uh, click, then it'll select the first corner of the region. And you have to select a region to do pretty much anything with the data pack. You click again, you select the second corner of the region. Now, once you select a region, a bunch of stuff will pop up. These are all the actions you can take. Uh, 
Uh, you can move the box with these buttons. So up and down, left, right, forward, and backwards are dependent on the direction you're facing. So if I'm facing this direction, forward, backwards, left, right are all relative to me. Similarly, left, right, forward, backwards. It's just a little bit easier than telling north, south, east, west. Uh, there's also critically a help button here. And if you click on this, it'll have a link to the manual. So anytime, if you forget where the manual is, you can just click that help button and it contains all the information that's gonna be in this video for how to use the, the plugin or the data pack. Uh, so you can move the selection around, like I said, with these buttons. You can also uh, edit the selection by clicking on any of these anchor points. And when you attack an anchor point, you'll be able to move it. Um, so there's a bunch of anchor points. There are some that are on the faces of the cube. There are some that are sort of on along the edges of the cube. And those will, you'll be able to edit uh, two faces of the cube. Uh, the two adjacent faces. And then there's the corners, which will actually edit three faces of the cube of the of the selected region. And so you can you can edit the region that way. Um, note that you have to actually attack uh, the the magma cube that's uh, corresponding to that uh, that that anchor point. And so if, if there's a block in the way, you won't be able to do it. So um, the other thing you can do if you want to edit your region is if you want to just clear and reselect a new region, just unselect your sword and reselect it. Uh, again, this data pack does nothing if you don't have, it won't do anything if you, unless you have this bling edit sword uh, in your in your hotbar as the selected item. So by deselecting the bling edit sword and reselecting it, you'll basically exit bling edit and then re-enter it. And so you can create a new selection. And that can be good if some of the anchor points you need to reach are out of the way or inaccessible, that sort of thing. There's a couple different kinds of cursors that you can use. By default, the cursor floats five blocks in front of you. So whichever direction your crosshair is pointing, five blocks in front. If you press the drop item key, in my case, that's Q, it'll switch, it'll toggle it to the Raycast cursor. You can press the drop item key to keep toggling back and forth. Uh, so the floating cursor floats in front of you. The Raycast cursor follows your crosshair until it hits a block, and that's where the cursor uh, actually is. Uh, each of these kinds of cursors has some configuration options. For the floating cursor, you can select the range, so 5, 10, 15, or 20 blocks. And then for the Raycast cursor, you can have it either stop uh, inside of the block that you're pointed at, or you can have it stop just before the block that you're pointed at, and that'll be inside of air. And they're each useful for different purposes. So like I said, the uh, when you select a region, uh, a bunch of options will pop up. So these are the actions you can take. There's clone, delete, fill, replace, random, plug in, and help. Uh, the simplest of these is delete. If I press delete, it'll just delete everything that's within the selection. Um, fill is probably the next simplest. If you click fill, you can use slash set block, tilde, 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 and then you can select what kind of block you want to fill with. So for instance, say I want to fill with a diamond block, I can do that and it'll fill the entire region with diamond blocks. And I can just click delete if I want to delete those. Uh, replace is the, probably the next one I should go over. Let's say I have a bunch of blocks like this. Let's put some other blocks. I'm just putting these down as an example. Um, so now I'm going to use, let's use the Raycast cursor to select this region nice and quick. Uh, let's, I wanted to just replace the uh, sands, uh, sandstone with something else, let's say diamond blocks, and you can see it'll only replace the sandstone. Every other block, it'll just leave alone. Clone is the next one I'll go over. Uh, clone has a bit more functionality to it, so there's just like kind of different ways you can clone. So first of all, let me select the region around this house, and I'll do the most basic kind of clone, which is just a straightforward clone. So when you select that clone button, uh, you'll immediately be in a mode where you can move the box around. If you click, it'll set the location, but you can keep moving it by clicking on any of the anchor points. They all do the same thing. They just move the entire box. You can't resize a clone box because it has to be the same size as the source. So this is the destination. Uh, you can also move that box around again with the up, down, left, right buttons, forward, backwards if you want to fine tune the location and that can often be very helpful. But then uh, the most basic kind of clone, straightforward clone is this confirm clone button. When you press it, it'll clone the uh, source blocks to the destination region. 
and it'll also select that region. So let's say I wanted to try to see what it looked like if I replaced all the oak planks with uh, well, birch planks. Yeah, and we can see what it looks like very quickly. Uh, so that's the most basic kind of clone. Uh, there's the next kind I'm going to show you is called clone and repeat. So if I type out the word or spell out the word hi, let's select this. Uh, let's clone. I'll set the region. It needs to be moved up a block in order to be next to it. So I'll do that. So clone and repeat will clone the blocks, but it'll also move both the source and the destination over by the same amount. And uh, so let's say you offset it in both dimensions. So let's clone this over here or maybe even all three dimensions. So like that, uh, it'll, it'll just, whatever offset this is, clone and repeat will continue that offset. So you can stack, uh, stack a clone operation that way. And hi, 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 hi. Uh, so this is, this can be really useful for doing something like over here. I uh, created sky grid by just using a bunch of clone and repeats. And this was from one of the tweets that I sent out earlier this week. Um, so that's clone and repeat. And then the final thing uh, you already saw in the uh, in this the beginning of the video, but it's the clone brush. And so let's say I select the corners of this, and let's turn on my clone brush. And basically, this is a very point and click way of cloning. So uh, this is where different cursors come in, especially useful. So cloning re right up against my face is kind of difficult, but if I have a range of 15, it can be a little bit easier to uh, to clone things. Um, and since kind of see what I'm doing. So uh, there's also, if I set the cursor to raycast, um, I can put this like on top of the ground at wh whichever direction I'm pointing. And so that's what I did with the trees earlier. And uh, this that's also a very useful way to use the clone brush with the different kinds of cursors. And then the one last thing that I didn't mention so far is uh, when you select clone, it also provides a couple of options. You can either don't clone air or do clone air. Uh, if you don't clone air, let's, let's select that one, then um, you can do something. Let's turn it back to this. So um, you can see these are kind of intersecting each other and, and it's uh, forming a smooth landscape. But if you select do clone air, um, then when I clone this in, it's going to any air blocks in the original selection will get clone and delete, and overwrite whatever blocks were already there. So that's just a little difference. They're both useful in different circumstances. Next, I want to cover block randomization. So first you select a region, uh, you click this random button in the under the actions, and this will provide a couple options. The first thing you need to do to, do to use block randomization is store selected region as random block pool. Then we can do something like, uh, let's select a, a region. Just to show this off, you can click again random and fill selected region from random block pool. So what did this do? Basically for every block in this region that I had selected, it took a random block from this random block pool. It basically picked a random set of coordinates with, that was within this little region and use whatever block was there. So if I want to change what's in the random block pool, I can do that and uh, it'll it'll remember the region that I stored and not the particular blocks. And so if I fill selected region from random block pool again, it'll it'll uh, use the updated blocks. Um, so filling from that random block pool can be nice for making, say, like walls or something that have random blocks in them. Uh, random yeah, fill selected region. Obviously, the diamond blocks don't look that nice here. Let's <laughs> let's let's put let's put a stone block back there. Um, but you can also use it to uh, replace blocks. And I think this is where it gets a little bit more useful. So if I want to select these blocks that I created with the clone brush, again, you saw this earlier, but you click random and then you click replace in selected region from random block pool. And then you can use, again, set block to define which block you want to replace. So if I want to replace stone, it'll do that. And uh, all the original stone, again, some of them are going to get replaced with stone so they won't change uh, so uh, also any ratios will will be carried over so since since one third of the blocks in this block pool are stone one third of the blocks over here are going to be stone as well and if i want to keep applying it i can just keep clicking it and more and more of the stone 
uh, oh, right, I have to actually use set block. Uh, more and more of the stone will be replaced. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty straightforward to use. So the last feature I want to show off is a bit more open-ended, um, and it's called plugins. Uh, so first of all, let me set this all to all the sandstone, replace it with grass blocks. Uh, so if you click this plugin button under the actions, it'll list off any plugins you have installed. So Vegetate is actually a separate bat, uh, data pack. So you'll notice the data packs that I have enabled right now are Bling Edit and Bling Edit Vegetate. And so you can download standalone data packs as plugins to Bling Edit. There is documentation in the manual that explains if you're a data pack developer, how you can write your own data packs. But again, if you click help, uh, you'll be taken to that, uh, to that manual. Or there's also a link in the video description. Uh, but yeah, so the only plugin I have installed, and in fact, the only plugin I've written is this Vegetate plugin. If you click it, it'll provide a bunch of vegetation on top of the, whatever grass blocks there are. This would be a little bit hard to implement with the randomized functionality I just showed you because it actually does it on top of the grass blocks instead of replacing anything. And it also can do some two block tall things, which would be hard to do with randomize. Uh, so, so there's a couple of reasons you'd, you'd want to use this plugin, but mostly it was a demonstration. Um, but basically the idea behind a plugin is that it does whatever you want with a selected region. So you can take advantage of pulling at its ability to select regions, and then you write a plugin that says what to do with that region. And it's very open-ended. Data pack developers can kind of go crazy with this. So there's a lot you can do with Bling Edit. I tried to make the UI as user-friendly as possible um, and, and the functionality as useful as possible. I'm sure I'll be adding some more features to it. And so I'll be updating the manual and providing update videos as I do add more features. So it's entirely possible that at the point you're watching this video, there's actually more features. There's some things I want to do that are not trivial to do, things like rotate. Uh, there's no actual like programmatic way or, or built-in way to rotate a block. So you kind of have to have special cases for every block that can be rotated and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'll be looking into adding more features like that. But for now, I think it's already worth downloading if, you, if you're someone who does a lot of building and doesn't want to install any mods um, because it's, it's got quite a bit of functionality that's already quite useful. Uh, again, check in the video description. There's a download link inside the manual. So you have to go click on the manual and from there, you'll be able to, to download the data pack. Hope you enjoyed, and that's about it. Thanks for watching.